Hello, people. How you doing? I'm back in another late edition of the Tuesday After Show episode. Oh, uh, really? Oh, episode 15. Yes, it's been a wild one. We've had things happen. We have anything to talk about today from great, crazy games, interesting games, comebacks, and all that good stuff. So, we're going to get started here. Uh, a couple of things I want to talk about some of last week's games. Uh, of course, you know, we're going to talk about the Broncos Lions pretty much and some of the fish shakes. And I'll admit to this as a Lions fan. Talk on it. They probably scored a touchdown two or three plays. And every time the fish has been in, uh, has been bad. So, I think at some point, NFL needs to review officials and find them. I think you'll miss calls that happen. I get that. Fair enough. I 1,000 percent understand that. But at some point, they have to have some type of accountability for this thing that looks so obvious on replay. Maybe a small fine, so maybe not suspension. Uh, definitely, definitely mark down. Definitely them doing further games or preacher games of winning teams or definitely playoff games. Shouldn't be. There should be so many points to a sliding scale that the referees don't do. There shouldn't be seven the referees doing playoff games, just to be real. Which is going to leave it on my next subject, the Kazi guy. Yeah, play for the, uh, I remember he plays for Pittsburgh. Safety. Laid a pretty good hit. Find out he's had a little hit of suspension. Now, I understand now that folks are upset, and I think that one looked like was not so, it's, it's football, you know, quarterback throw a ball in the middle, let's just face it, guys are going to get hit. Now, did he get suspended because of the hit was so bad or maybe because of his past history? Huh, you can actually bring that into question reasonably. And definitely, I'm saying all like, here he go again, taking up for the defender, yes I am. I take up defensive players sometimes, because you know, I play basketball, that why do I check, make sure guys covered, you know, we own it, but it's a little different playing basketball, you know, flavor foul, flavor foul, whatever else. Trust me, I used to do full deals back in the day and I played in my rec league. Especially I got mad and <laughs> have a friend call. I'd say, hey, call. push him down, throw him a wall, caught it. But as far as this goes, it's a situation where it's kind of hard to balance everything out because of what's going on, because of the way this thing is officiated now. It's made it so hard for defenders to play. You can't hit him high, you can't hit him low. You hit him below his body, the shoulder, there's a behind penalty, possible ejection. I understand getting the headshots of the game. But you know, you often you go up the ball, you run full speed, you start dunking now. The finner has like what? Maybe three tenths a second to adjust. Literally a speed of less than like two tenths a second. That's more like 150 mile hour fastball you're trying to hit. Or 120, you know, it's like baseball players don't have their top reflexes. While well, standing still looking at something coming towards them. Now they're trying to move towards an ob- a moving person, object, whatever you might want to say, the ball or the person. And you got to make a last second adjustment to avoid it. It's just impossible. I mean, I also got to choose the NFL. Actually, the cops rule, I kind of like. They kind of review it, look it over. They kind of say, hey, did the guy move his head? Yeah, it wasn't intent there. It was just bad position on the guy. Just have the football. You're going to have collisions and hits. It's going to happen. And I go say the guy that got suspended should have got suspended. He probably, it's just tough, man. It's tough to be defending the league. Exact quarterback you get caught. I know the Lions got called for rubbing and pass on, on a very great hit by Bruce Irvin a couple games ago against New Orleans. It was like, what'd he do? Well, he landed his whole body on the quarterback. He got to roll over. So he got defenders probably getting hurt trying to avoid hitting quarterbacks and probably hurting and also slipping plays and giving up big play. So it's a very fine balance of hitting. And even at the high school and even little league, it's just tough to play football. It's just tough to play right now if you're a defensive player. The offensive player, hey, I can run a little bit get, don't have to worry about it. I get hit, the guy's getting kicked out of the game. And I probably, if I had to play twice a year and he's one of the top players on the defense, I've probably not seen him game two, depending on how long he gets suspended for it, if he's one of those hitters. Uh, it's tough. Like I said, it's tough. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go bullet proof some notes on some standings here, real fast here. Because this has been wild. I'm talking number one. When Monday night game, the Eagles Seahawks, and I'm going to go back a little bit. The Bears Cleveland game. Number one, with all the things in the world, Chicago couldn't hit a long, long pass, hand in the end zone, man, kicks it up, pops it up, intercepts in the last play of the game. I mean, Chicago can't catch a break. And how about this dog going to think about last week? The Panthers 
The only two wins of the season is against the Atlanta Falcons. Can you imagine you lose a playoff spot to a team that's going to go two and fifteen, and you got you gave up, both, you lost to them both of their wins. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, the Bengals Vikings. The Bengals found those brownie guy. I don't know. I seen him play a little bit in college, and I got to say I've been impressed with him. But I wrote off Cincinnati being done when Joe Burrow went out. Cincinnati didn't held that thing together. The better not would have. The Raiders in charge again, 63-21 last week. What was that? How in the heck? The Raiders went 3 nothing. They were on a four-day turnaround. Shoot it around home. But on a basically a four-day turnaround, they went from 3 nothing losing to 63 points in less than, in less than basically a half a week turnaround. And basically got the Chargers head coach and, and uh, drum manager out of there. Of course, not fair. I would say Chargers, they had some talent. But no Justin Herbert. It would, I don't think, maybe she'd write out the end of the season, see what happened. Uh, could that be Bill, Bill Chicks in his landing spot? Young, great quarterback in the making. And a head that looks a little outside his early part of his prime. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, of course, the Titans, Texans. Basically, I think the Texans might have just about ended the Titans' playoff hopes. I'll put it like this it's very close to it. I mean, as of, as of Monday, I know this much. They are exactly 26 of the 32 teams still left in playoff contention. And it's crazy that Tennessee is actually still one of them. And uh, I know Carolina's out, Arizona out, Washington out. Yes, the Bears are still in this thing, in case anybody in the NFC North sees this video. Somehow they're in this thing still. The Jets out, I think Tennessee, the Jets, I think Tennessee Jets out, Chargers out, but the Raiders still in here with the playoffs, but you know what I'm saying just. Well, maybe it's at 2016. I know the three MC teams out is Cardinals, Arizona, Washington. So it must be it must be the Jets, Tennessee, and the and uh and New England. Everybody else? Somehow by some crazy that's the two five and nine teams this late in the season still in the playoff. Huh? <sighs> One season still wide open. This is probably the most wide open NFL they've ever been. Most people think I'm crazy, but hey. It's up for grabs. When I say this much, the Lions have just a good chance of any better. I usually don't do this in my Tuesday second, but I didn't throw that in there because a lot of people yak to me telling me they can't do it, but everybody's got at least three losses. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of muddles, seven to seven and eight and six and seven and, and six and eight and all bunched up there in a row in the in eight and six. We're talking about just a total crazy wild card race to the end. Well, I'm going to tell you this much, folks. We're going to see some good football this upcoming week. I don't know how much I look at that. I got to look at some of this game myself. Because I figured these got to be some playoff implicated son of a gun games here. But it pretty much almost all of them are to some degree. But, you know, we got Detroit, Minnesota. Basically, Detroit can wrap up division win, but y'all know the story here. I'm not going to go into that. Saints, Rams, Thursday night. Ooh, we picked that one. They're both seven to seven. Basically, five to the Steelers, Steelers, Bengals, AFC North fight. That's gonna be a fight. Charger Bills. Char Bills should take care of the Charger. I think Charger on their lap. Colts Falcons. Colts are very close to getting there. And there, they eight and six. They ain't all the way there yet. Falcons are hold on by a thread. Dog on it. Seahawks types. You really worried about Seahawks to take care of business in that game. Washington Jets. Who's going to watch that game? Packers, Panthers. Who's going to watch that game? Uh, Browns and Texans. We, barn burner. By the way, that, that game is Christmas Eve. So is Jacksonville and Tampa Bay. Two Florida teams ranked them thick of, the, thick of that wild card to slash division scrambles in, in, in NFC and AFC. Both. They're both first base teams fighting to stay out of losing column. To stay out of the fight for the division and stay stay in the division lead and stay out of the water. That's gonna be some good stuff. Now the now, now the four o'clock uh, Bears Cardinals. Who gonna watch that? Dolphins Cowboys. Both ten and four. Both trying to fight possible one season at some point. Broncos Patriots. Broncos got to get this game. This is probably the easiest thing they got left on the schedule to get a give me for certain. They got to stay in the hunt. Kansas City Raiders. The Raiders. This might be their last hope. Obi Wan Kenobi. Eagles Giants. So once again, the Giants. Last hope will be when come, but I don't think the Eagles are gonna lose two weeks in a row. Definitely not no jump team like that. 
and of course, the Christmas night game. Oh my goodness, the only thing we missed is another hardball brother coach in San Francisco. The Ravens and the 49ers. Folks, you can't get no better than this. So Merry Christmas, I see you guys on the 26th. I'm hyped to watch some football. And the great part about it is, I have option. I have, what, three Christmas football games and five NBA basketball games. And yes, Pistons is still not one since before even before the making this video today. Peace out, deuces, love you next week.